we like to talk to you about networking. Networking, I think, is by far, uh, I think, the, the greatest strength of this platform. Um, and we've recognized it by putting it at the base of our pyramid. It's, it's the sort of the foundational piece uh, of the network, and it's what holds up the work plan. Um, and so today, Dave and I wanted to just get a discussion going, so I hope you've all had a, a lot of wine at, 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 at lunch. Um, and, and get everyone talking. Um, and it's going to be in three parts, uh, about knowing, about uh, growing, and now and then about the network flowing. So, the platform. It's, it's a place where donors can talk to donors. Um, today we're trying something new with day two uh, for platform members. And I think this is a, a fantastic opportunity to bring us all together uh, in an in a room where we can share frankly with each other, share our priorities, share our concerns, um, share how we are functioning and some of the challenges we have. Um, and we saw that a bit with post-2015. And we saw also earlier our thoughts on how the, the, the work plan should be structured. Um, so networking is also a means for us to deepen our communication with each other. Um, I'm going to kind of go through some of these things very quickly, but you know, how and why do we share? We, well, we, share to, we network to share information. Um, it's to put perspective on each other's work. You know, we seek reason from our peers. I have an issue with something, and I want to find out how David is managing his institution. So we network, and it, it gives me perspective on how to deal and how to manage that issue internally. Um, I, I pulled up some of the theory about networking, and. It, actually help me think through uh, and, and um, how, how we are networking in the platform and the types of tools we're using. We, we network through induction. So I, I sit next to someone and I learn and absorb knowledge by sitting next to someone else who's learning and absorbing knowledge and through that networking we, we, we rationalize and, and, and gain common perspectives or differing perspectives on uh, an issue. And we saw that yesterday with the uh, buzz groups after uh, in the afternoon. <coughs> People just turned around in wherever they were sitting and just started talking. And I'm sure you all met someone new who was sitting around close to you. So you, you networked through proximity. Homophily, uh, birds of a feather flock together. So e each of uh, the persons in our institutions who are interested on a particular thematic issue gather together on a telco, on livestock or nutrition or climate change, because they're interested in those particular issues. And so they, they flock together because they're the climate folks. And so that, that, that forces them to sort of network. Confounding factors. Well, we all have common exposure to influencing <coughs> factors of development. Uh, we are, are under a period of change in Canada. We are merging our development portfolio into a Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade. And I know others are doing the same thing in the Netherlands and Australia. And so I'll, I'll start networking more often with Jim and Monique to find out how are you handling this? You know, what are, you, what are your thoughts on this? How are you managing these issues? So we'll network because we're, we're, we're have these similar confounding factors on us. Um, another point is that we're, we, we network not always for a specific GDPRD business. The, the beauty is we, we come here together, we get to know each other, but then we, it spurs additional conversations that may not be about uh, the, the common ground document or, or um, a particular, uh, the, the the land database, for example, but we might network about the responsible principles on agriculture and investment. So it spurs discussion on other items. And so, yeah, just to review, so what are the different op tools we're using? Here at the General Assembly, uh, virtually, there's, there's virtual briefings, workshops and side events that we plan, and, and, and the various teleconferences. So there's a range of opportunities for us and our colleagues in our institutions to, to, to better network with each other. And I think that's something we should be promoting. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm of the view that promoting discussion and dialogue between our institutions can only bring greater benefit, right? And, and we should allow it to flow. We should be, we should just happen, let it happen organically and create those tools for it to, for, to pull in various people from our institutions who want to talk to each other. We shouldn't be trying to bureaucratically Overmanage and, and, and decide who can get together to talk about a specific issue. If they want to get together, let them get together. Let's help them. I mean, the, the cost of facilitating discussion uh, is quite marginal. The, the secretary turns on a telco. It's not a big cost, and I think we should be supporting that. 
Um, some of the benefits of networking. Um, Dave and I threw up a few sort of benefits, and I wanted to give an example of each one. The first happened uh, about three, four months ago. I was going through Frankfurt, and um, I contacted Jürgen. Jürgen, who works for the German Development Bank KFW, based in Frankfurt. Now, Jürgen and, and I, our institutions rarely overlap. Our, our, our work rarely overlaps. Um, but you know, we got together for a drink and a meal, and we started talking. And, and Jürgen told me about an investment that he walked away from about three, four years ago. And I thought, wow, I think we're actually supporting that same investment. So I went back to my colleagues and, and, and discussed, and, and they realized, well, you know, we had managed it this way, but we could have done better. And so as a result of that, and a few other factors, they've now created an informal working group uh, in my department to bring in a broader set of people on those decisions. And so partly through networking, I was able, I was able to bring knowledge back and challenge my colleagues and as a result, we now have a quality enhancement of our programming. Um, so I think that's a direct benefit. Another example around efficiency of work happened uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, a colleague from AID was going to visit uh, some projects in Haiti and wanted to contact my Canadian colleagues in Haiti. It's, it's a typical request. Um, it doesn't take very long. But we were able to fulfill that request very quickly. Uh, the colleague reached out through one of the thematic groups to my colleague on that same thematic group. Um, she bounced the email up to me, I bounced it to my colleague in the Haiti program, they bounced it to the person in the field, and it came right back up the chain, all within about two hours. Why is that surprising? And why is this an example of how the platform helped? Over Christmas, I was, I was talking to a colleague about procrastination and, and, and e email inbox management. And, there's a psychological issue about we, we tend to respond to emails a lot faster when that person is in a close, proximate network to us. If your neighbor at work sends you a quick email, you'll just quickly reply back. If you get a cold call email from someone who's found your email uh, address on a website, you open it up, you're like, oh, you close it, you go back in the afternoon, uh, you maybe you close it again, you think about it, and you, you reply the next day. Um, Maybe that's just me, maybe everyone else is a more efficient worker, but, but, but I think there's, it's a general phenomenon that you tend to reply quicker to emails when it's someone close to your network. And so when, when this email chain came in from the USAID, it hit proximate people, and it, it, the email flowed very quickly. In the space of two hours, we had four or five emails bounced to Haiti and back, whereas if they had kind of gone uh, through a much more uh, cold call approach, it would have been a day or two before yeah. the person in Haiti would have replied back. So again, uh, how the platform has helped bring greater efficiency in our work. I'll let David sort of throw in a, an example. Just in the interest of time, uh, just to keep it short, but I mean, we've already had a lot of discussion this morning and this afternoon about networking, even if we weren't necessarily calling it networking all the time. Uh, clearly, I think we all view the platform itself as a network, um, but I think if we look broader uh, at, for example, what the land group has done, uh, then we can start to see that the, the platform is also a network of networks, and it can expand outward by, uh, by bringing in you know, other networks that we've helped to foster and, and facilitate, and I think that's one of the strengths of the platform. I think the, the way the land group uh, has evolved has been a great example of how that can happen. Thanks. So we're going to shift the parts a bit. So quickly to the, the growing the network. So I think there's value in the network. It helps us know about each other's work. How can we grow the network? Well, the number of members who are joining are, 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 are more. You know, We have more members joining the platform. And then also I think we should be making a better effort, and I think we are, at getting greater members within our institutions plugged into thematic groups and other events. And so the number of people who are reaching is beyond just the focal points. It's, it's, it's a greater mass of people in our institutions. And so, so do the possible connections. And, and so how can we help to facilitate this rapid expansion of networking amongst ourselves? We'd like to throw out three proposals. Um, it's really food for thought. It's, it's just ideas on how we can sort of reinvigorate the networking. Um, and then we want to show a quick video, and then we'll have sort of a bit of a table buzz question 
period. The first is strengthen the use of social media. It, it, it sounds silly. Um, you know, of course we all want to try this. Uh, my suggestion is, is let's, let's look at the junior analysts in our, in our uh, institutions. They are much better at using social media. Um, and let's look to them to, to, let's get them connected. Let's get them working on how we can improve the networking and sharing of ideas and communication between our institutions. Um, and hopefully that will filter up to ourselves. Um, I was quite amazed when I, I saw some statistics recently that you know, face, use of Facebook in Canada is decreasing. And the 15 to 25 year old age group are not using Facebook. They're using a whole range of other networking or social media tools that I've never heard of. And so the folks who are entering our institutions in the next three to five years will be using things that we don't even know about, right? And I think that's important. And, and why not start using them to help us improve communication? Um, and so maybe we should just get our, our junior analysts connected and uh, see what the platform secretary can help enable. And um, who knows where it goes? Again, we already touched on this a little um, earlier today, but um, you know, we we have a, a pretty strong network, I think, at the headquarters level within the platform. Um, and somebody suggested earlier that it would be useful to, to see if, if we could uh, do more networking at the field level, uh, among the even among the donor working groups at the field level. So there are a number of ways we could go about this. Um, one that's not up here that just occurred to me listening to that comment earlier was, you know, could we, could the platform collect um, uh, information about the donor working groups in, in each of the, the countries where we're working and, you know, just have contact so that we know, you know, that information is available uh, so that we can share it with each other. Um, you know, there, uh, it, is this scenario we want to get into? Is there value to us in uh, <clears throat> look, not substituting for what's already happening at the field level, but looking for better ways to give um, visibility at the headquarters level? Uh, you know, we have good visibility about what our people in the field are doing, but you know, we we at headquarters level don't necessarily know uh, what. What's happening in terms of coordination with other donors? Is there some way we can increase that visibility? Uh, just one more point to the, the, the slide before. I forgot to mention, like, for example, the, the Government of Canada is soon to replace all of our mobile devices. And within a few years, they want us to move to this being our business platform, our primary business platform. It's the whole workspace 2.0, getting rid of offices, uh, hoteling, and, and I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to be expected to work off this. And I think I'm going to have to use some of these tools because I, I, you know, <laughs> it's going to be challenging. Um, one last proposal is perhaps more of an objective for our networking, is perhaps to begin uh, to use networking and social media tools to, to reach out and engage with emerging donors uh, or, or these um, pri private sector partners. Um, we've now discovered in Canada when we're engaging with private sector partners, they're all on Twitter, and, and, and that's how they communicate. They don't really send us emails. They want to they wanna communicate on Twitter, and we're not yet. And so we're not actually on the right platform to communicate with them. Um, also, with emerging donors, it may be a way for us to begin establishing relationships and bring them on board into very, very initial, informal policy dialogue. Because I know they, they, it is challenging for them to come in a formal event and, and engage in policy dialogue, but we have to find a way to, to reach out and, and, and start meeting these people. 